This customer called me because they had recently been finding tons and tons of wasps infesting their home. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you why this home in particular was struggling with these wasps so bad. I'm also going to show you exactly how I, as a pest control professional, handled this problem. Then we're going to discuss how to prevent an infestation like this from happening to you. This customer has wasps inside their house worse than I have seen in a very, very long time. It's not just like one wasp nest. What's going on here is these wasps are just finishing up, overwintering, and it's starting to get warmer outside, even though it's cold and gloomy today, and they're completely infesting the upstairs of their house. They called me to take care of them, and in today's video, I'm going to show you just exactly what I'm doing step by step. So I'm gonna finish getting ready and meet you inside. Throughout this service, I was collecting these wasps on glue boards. I thought that this was a pretty good idea because I could give the customer some immediate relief from these wasps, and I could also show you some really cool close-up shots of them. Once they were caught on the glue board, it's really hard to get good shots when they're moving around. The only reason that I could catch them on the glue boards is because the wasps were in what I sometimes call zombie mode. This is just their chill, overwintering state, but we're going to talk more about their overwintering a little later. I wanted to walk you through step by step how I investigated and treated this problem efficiently. Here's an overview of exactly what information I had received from the customer. First of all, the customer moved into this home less than a year ago. This is good to know because this means that they have had no preventative pest control service which also means pretty much anything is fair game. It's also good to know because this means that they don't know the annual trends of this home. Like if this happens every year, then I would know that this is something that's just weird with their home that they just get these wasps. But if this had only happened one time in the past 10 years that they lived here, then I might think that there was a little something else going on, like this was just a one-off nest, or someone left a window open, or another random event. Uh, secondly, they hadn't seen any wasps until about three weeks ago. This is important because of the second point about the timing of this video. This video, thirdly, was filmed March 1st, which means this is just way too early for wasp nests to be active in the western North Carolina area. And fourthly, the wasps were only found in the upstairs of the home and mostly around this window. This gives me a huge hint as to where the problem was originating and what I need to do for the treatment. With those four clues, I was pretty quickly able to identify what was going on and determine the best way to handle this situation. But next I wanted to talk about what was not the problem, what was not causing these wasps. There are two main things that the customer thought was going on here. Firstly, the customer thought that there was an active wasp nest inside the attic or outside the home on the eaves. He kept on saying that there's gotta be a wasp nest somewhere. There's gotta be a wasp nest. There can't be this many without a wasp nest. And he even sent me pictures of these old inactive nests that were hanging on the eave of his house. <laughs> it was very difficult for me to get the customer to understand that these wasps were not coming from one nest. It's just too early in the year for that to happen. The customer also thought that because the wasps were gathering around the window, that that meant that that was where they were coming inside his house. This was actually definitely not the case, and this is a very common misunderstanding around customers and the pest control industry. Bugs like wasps, they are just going towards the light. There are no windows in nature. They're trying to get out of your house. <laughs> this happens all the time. Customers want me to spray around the windows, and I'm happy to spray around the doors and windows, but. 99% of the time, that's not where the wasps or other bugs are actually getting into the house. So you may be wondering, what was really the problem? Well, the biggest problem here was that this customer in particular had recently watched a Dan the Bugman video, but they did not smash the like button. Unfortunately, the wasps had heard about this and decided to give the customer all kinds of hell until they did. So please destroy the like button if you don't want this to happen to you. <laughs> but in all actuality, what was really happening here was a problem that could have most easily been prevented months and months ago. Every fall and winter, bugs like wasps, stink bugs, box elder bugs, ladybugs, flies, all kinds of insects search vigorously for spots to spend the winter. For insects, this cycle is called overwintering. 
When insects overwinter, they look for warm, covered areas to keep their bodies protected from the cold, frigid winter weather. Traditionally in nature, this would be places like piles of leaves or voids in tree trunks, other protected areas like that. But insects like these wasps have figured out, sometimes by mistake, that people's houses proved to be ideal protection from the winter elements. And this is exactly what had happened here. Last fall, say September through November, lots of wasps in the areas flew around and sensed that this house had great shelter areas around the eaves. They most likely sensed heat escaping from the attic or felt that this house had great protection from the elements. It honestly doesn't even matter that there might have been a couple of wasp nests on the eaves of this customer's house from last summer because in fact, only the fertilized queens are the ones to overwinter. So yes, every wasp you are seeing in today's video is a fertilized female. All of the worker wasps die off at the end of the year. Anyways, the most important part of this situation is that there were cracks probably around the soffits of this customer's house that allowed the wasps to enter in their cozy attic. Now normally in nature, overwintering for insects is a simple process. They find a warm shelter area, take a nap for a few months, then when they sense the warmth of spring approaching, they simply follow the light out of their den and enter into the outside world to start their normal nest building process. However, in situations where bugs enter into houses, the structure is more than the wasp bargained for. Instead of just a small crack with one entrance and exit point, these wasps end up inside this huge and confusing attic area. When the winter months were ending and spring approaching, the wasps did the only thing that they know how to do when trying to exit their overwintering home follow the light. Unfortunately for the customer and for the wasps, the brightest source of light in this entire attic was coming from the attic entrance. This means that all of the wasps started slowly making their way out of the attic and into the upstairs of this customer's home. From there, the wasps again just kept following the light and ended up at the windows right underneath the attic entrance. So now that we have properly identified the problem, you're probably wondering what is the best way to get rid of them. Well, here's what I did. First, I decided to grab some glue boards and go to town just sticking them to it to capture as many as I could. Honestly, this could have a little easier been accomplished by an industrial vacuum cleaner or something like that. But the next thing I did was spot treated any remaining live wasps or gathering points with my go-to aerosol Doxum NXT. This will kill the wasps and leave a residual to prevent gatherings in those areas. For example, I sprayed those around the windows and some of these wasps that I, that I found in the attic. Next, what I consider the most important part of today's treatment is I mixed up a residual insecticide called Bifen IT inside my backpack sprayer. I took this backpack sprayer all the way up into this customer's attic and treated pretty much everywhere that would make sense that I could get the sprayer to. Treated around the soffits, the beams, the joists, the AC vents, etc. This application is going to take some time to fully eliminate all the wasps because the wasps are slow moving. As long as the wasps come in contact with the surface I applied the Bifen IT to, then it will eliminate them. But as you see, the wasps are in zombie mode, so this may take just a little bit of time. Funnily enough, at the end of the treatment, the customer wanted me to bomb the attic with some over-the-counter insecticides he had most recently bought to try to handle them. Normally, I would strictly shy away from suggesting this, much less doing this service myself. But in today's circumstance, I thought this might actually be somewhat helpful. The customer was super, super insistent on me using them, so he didn't waste his money. So I set off these and air quote bombs inside the customer's attic. Basically, these are just kill on contact, really, really mild insecticides, but I thought what would be the biggest benefit of using these is that this is going to somewhat stir up the wasps, get them agitated, get them moving, and with them moving more, that would speed up the process of them coming in contact with the real meat and potatoes of the treatment, the Bifen IT surface application that I applied with my uh, battery powered backpack sprayer. Honestly, that job was pretty epic. I haven't seen that many wasps in a long time. Those wasps were all overwintering. There's a very high chance that every single one of those wasps was a female and they start the colony or the nest all by themselves in the spring. And yeah, that was, that was fun. I'm glad I got to show you that. The customer, he was a real, real character. He, he called me first and then he called another company and then he called me again and I was able to get out there sooner and take care of them. I 
he asked for a bunch of business cards. I gave him a bunch of my business cards and he said that he had a loud mouth and that if I did a good job, he was gonna tell all of his friends. I got them signed up on a quarterly pest control service. So I'm going to be out there. What I normally do with my quarterly service is I do the initial and then about a month later, I come back, especially if they have an infestation like that, just do a touch up spray, make sure everything's looking good before I get them on the regular routine maintenance plan. So that is what I'm going to do with this customer. It was in fact another day of treating wasps without being stung on the job. That is six years in the pest control industry with only one sting. The, uh, the initial sting was the first year that I was ever doing pest control down in Alabama. So I think that was kind of my initiation sting from the wasps. And since then we've had a good working, you know, professional relationship. It's a little easier to avoid being stung when it's cold outside. All the wasps are very dormant and zombie-like, super, super slow moving, as you can see. A couple quick things, please like, please subscribe. Please check out my Amazon storefront with all of my cool products on there. And if you buy some, I get a very small percentage of the commission. So if you could just buy all of your Amazon stuff on the, uh, the storefront through my links, that would be amazing. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you buy products through an Amazon storefront, even if the product isn't listed on a storefront, say if you click my link and it takes you to you know, the sprayer I used today and you start browsing on Amazon and decide that, hey, I don't need a pest control sprayer, but I did need a, a new something or other for my house. If you buy something through that link, even if it's not on the Amazon page, I still get a percentage of the commission from it. So well, that's pretty cool, I thought. And yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching each and every one of you. I love my subscribers and I love doing pest control. And uh, I'm here for the long run, guys, and I'm just going to keep making better and better videos every day, I promise. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very, very soon. Peace.